Hey everyone, recording gameplay today has never been easier, however I see a lot of people using settings that negatively affect the end result. From laggy and blurry footage to sometimes no sound at all. So today I'm going to show you how to record footage in OBS along with all of the settings to give you that crisp and clear video output quality that you expect from a recording. This video isn't sponsored by anybody, so let's cut to the reason you're here. If you're new to OBS, you'll be opening it into a black window, which is called a preview window, and where the magic happens. But first, we need to focus on the proper settings, and then you can work on that later. I'm going to be going over all of the settings we should change and briefly explain the why. That way you're not going in completely blind and will be able to go back in and tweak a thing or two should you have the desire or need to do so. First thing that we're going to do is you're going to head down over to settings and then click on video and pick a resolution. The base canvas resolution is what your monitor or screen is set to and that output resolution is what will appear in the video. I have a 1440p monitor so we'll set it to this resolution and the current standard resolution for gaming and just video viewing is 1080p. So I wouldn't recommend going below that unless you have a particular project in mind. I'll also change that output to match. Personally, I have a higher end machine, so I like to record at 1440p. However, if you find your OBS struggling to keep up, keep in mind that increasing bitrate or resolution will increase the load on your computer. And even if you feel like Vilkis from Skyrim, don't worry, I can take it. Your computer might not be able to take it. So changing that output resolution to a lower one could help fix any performance you may be running into. Now let's head over to the output section and let's change that setting to advanced, which will let us make more tweaks. Today we're just going to focus on the recording aspect. This is where you can set where your OBS will send your recordings. I just leave it in my videos folder and I just clean it out monthly. So do what works best for you. For the recording format, the best format to use because it's recognized everywhere is MP4. However, if you have a power surge and you were recording for the last three hours, it would cause that file to become corrupt because it was unable to save correctly. So using the MKV file format is also a very good alternative if you don't want to take that risk. Now we're at the part where the magic really happens and that is your encoder. This is where we will tell it to utilize our graphics card and I personally use an Nvidia card and since it is an RTX, we have a couple of options. The research I've done tells us that the best one to be using right now is the NVIDIA NVENC H264 as it has more stability versus just regular NVENC for some users and better support. You can go ahead and leave your audio encoder set to the FFMPG AAC as that's the best recommended one I found across multiple sources. I will be turning on audio track 1 and 2, which I will set up later in another video to use game audio on track 1 and Discord audio on the other. So I can just edit out the boys because trust me, sometimes you need to do that for Discord. <laughs> oh, f why? <laughs> f you, that's your fault. Moving on to the next part of the encoder settings. We're going to go ahead and leave the rate control as CBR. And here's where we can get down to the brass tacks because bitrate can get confused with your network's bitrate. But what this setting is about is just how much information is transferring. And with such, the higher the rate, the more taxing it is on your hardware. Now, Twitch sort of soft capped their bitrate to be about 6,000. But if you're doing recordings, that's actually incredibly low. Instead, we're going to set this bitrate for recordings to be anywhere between 12,000 and 18,000. I personally place it at 14,000. However, if your PC is on the lower end, you can rest assured with 8 to 10,000 for the setting. The other rate control option is called CQP, and basically it's more of a smarter CBR setting that will automatically adjust the bitrate based on what is on the screen. And instead of adjusting a bit rate for this category, you can adjust a CQ level. And the lower the number, the higher the quality it is. And I found that 15, 14 is pretty good and gets you pretty indistinguishable quality. However, if your PC is on the lower end, you could be able to get away with 19 to 22. 
The next setting is preset, which has nice descriptions to help you decide. I like to use the best quality option, but just remember that the encoder has a trade-off between file size, quality, and speed. And if you try to aim for all three, you'll need a really beefy machine to keep up. For multi-pass mode, for most lower end machines, you'll want the single pass, which means whatever the encoder picks up at that time is good enough for it. Changing this to a quarter resolution is a good middle stop between doing two full double takes and only the base one. Under profile, you'll want to leave the psycho visual tuning box checked off if you're using NVIDIA NVENC, as even NVIDIA has gone on to say that they recommend leaving that checked off. I have another video that goes into more detail about this part, but GPU zero references which GPU in your machine you'll be using. GPU zero is essentially equal to the first one and it, GPU one would be equal to the second one, which I know can kind of get confusing. But for this video, just go ahead and leave it at zero if you even have the option. And that's pretty much it when it comes to configuring settings in OBS as Everything else you can do in OBS doesn't directly control your streaming or recording performances like these settings do. I recommend that any of these settings that you change, you go back and view the recording as that will show you if it looks good or if there's any improvements you need to make. So if it's blurry, you may need to improve the quality that it's being saved as. An honorable mention in terms of perfect settings would be to disable your preview window. After I'm finished knowing what to expect in that window, I like to disable it to reduce any performance it may negatively have on the computer while recording. And like I said at the beginning of this video guys, this is a quick video to run you through your setup of OBS and to choose the best settings that will give you the best quality in turn. If you guys found this video helpful, please leave a like and if you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to help out. Thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you around again.